next video in the series about pregnancy. First of all, let me apologize that uh, uh, my tripod got smushed. I don't know if the kids or the cat did it. Um, so right now I have a mini tripod propped up against something else and I'm really hoping it won't fall over during the video. If that happens, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll know why. But what was I going to talk about having to do with pregnancy? You know, I try to focus on things that uh, my students ask a lot of questions about. One area where I get a lot of questions uh, has to do with pregnancy testing. Sometimes it happens uh, right after I teach about something. Sometimes it happens a little later where someone, maybe them, maybe a friend, family member, uh, has questions about pregnancy testing and they come to me and they're like, Dr. Sir Preston, I don't know who to ask. Please, can you tell me what does this, what does this test mean? I once had a coworker when I worked in a hospital uh, come out of the bathroom in a panic and show me a pregnancy test and it looked like a positive pregnancy test. And they said, does this mean what I think it means? And I say, well, it's not always a straightforward answer. But, you know, and if you have any concerns whatsoever about whether you or someone close to you is pregnant, contact a medical health professional. Um, in addition to doing at-home tests, you can also get uh, tests in a clinical setting that are more accurate. Contact a medical professional if you're concerned. But some things to know about the at-home tests. So your home pregnancy test that you can buy in a drugstore or pharmacy here in the U.S., um, it is a urine-based test. Some people will call them uh, pee sticks, uh, pee tests. Uh, I know when uh, when I was uh, trying to become pregnant and I was going to you know online blogs and forums and things about trying to get pregnant, a lot of times they use the abbreviation POAS for pee on a stick to shorten uh, the process of trying to see, am I pregnant? And so how do these tests work? How do the urine-based home pregnancy tests work? Um, they are looking for a particular hormone in the bloodstream and that hormone is not going to be present until implantation has happened. So backing up a little bit. So what is implantation? When does it happen? All right. So you've got conception or fertilization where sperm meets egg. You got this new individual or it could be twins and you'd have more than one individual. Let's just treat it as a singleton pregnancy. You've got a zygote that begins to add more cells and eventually you have sort of this ball shaped uh, individual that I'm using very oversimplified language. Uh, uh, you get a blastocyst eventually that burrows into the uterine lining. Hopefully it can happen in other places too and that's dangerous. But the ideal spot for implantation is the uterine lining, uh, what we call the endometrium. Uh, when we have a menstrual period, if, you know, if you do indeed have menstrual periods, if someone has a menstrual period, uh, the stuff that comes out, a lot of it's that endometrial lining being shed because it's not needed because there's not a pregnancy. And so uh, implantation is when that blastocyst burrows in, it physically connects with the person who is pregnant. So before it was just kind of floating around. And I say it, not just to be like dehumanizing, just, um, you know, the the individual. We don't know yet, you know, what kind of pronouns they use. All right. But that individual, they've just been floating around, right? They've been floating around and then they actually become physically connected. Once they become physically connected, the person who is pregnant, their body starts to go through the changes. Before implantation, yes, they are pregnant, but they don't, uh, they don't have any signs, any symptoms. You're not going to see anything on an ultrasound, and you're not even going to get a positive pregnancy test at that point. All right, sorry, I got distracted by the cat trying to destroy some things. So you, implantation happens, and then the person who is pregnant, they will start to have a certain hormone in their bloodstream and also detected in their urine. Uh, if you're curious, that's the uh, human chorionic gonadotropic hormone or just HCG. You might hear HCG discussed in other contexts, but this is uh, something that's released during pregnancy and we use that to detect, yes, okay, if this is being released, there is a pregnancy. Now, the kind of tricky thing is sometimes a person has lost a pregnancy, unfortunately, and they still uh, can be releasing this hormone. So sometimes you can get a, a positive pregnancy test even after that has happened. Um, but it means that a, a pregnancy has, a, has, been, has begun, or at least implantation has begun, has been initiated. And so since implantation has to happen, 
for you to get this positive pregnancy test, uh, it does mean that it's easy to get a false negative. That's the big thing that people will want to ask me about. Uh, they get a pregnancy test result, they'll say, hey, what's the chance this is a false negative? What's the chance this is a false positive? False positives are very rare. False negatives are pretty common, pretty easy to come by, usually having to do with timing or not following the directions on the test package. All right, so let's first, let's address false positives. Um, false positives can happen from a faulty test. Um, they can also happen when people don't follow the directions. Um, and by the way, pregnancy tests are a little similar to our COVID tests. Uh, and so I find that students now, when I talk about pregnancy testing, sometimes they're more familiar than they once were because they're familiar with taking other types of tests that use the same sort of system, uh, except COVID tests, you don't, you don't pee on them, you, um, you, you spit on them, but you know, you wait for that to see if that second line shows up. Uh, a lot of pregnancy tests have that same sort of setup. You pee on them and wait to see if a second line shows up or some of the fancier ones will have a plus sign or the word pregnant will show up on a digital test. But various things will happen and if those things happen, it means that they've detected that uh, that hormone in the bloodstream, not the bloodstream, sorry, urine, all right, if you take it to the doctor and they do a blood test, it's the bloodstream. And how can you get a false positive? You read the directions on one of these tests, it says um, read it within a certain amount of time and then don't read it after a certain amount of time. I think it's like 30 minutes on a lot of uh, test instructions. If you let it sit around, you can get something called an evaporation line, which is not actually from detecting that hormone. It's from uh, just sitting around and having differences in, in the material and it makes this second line show up, but it's a false positive. Uh, so you wanna follow the directions. You wanna follow the directions on the test. And if you got any concerns, call a medical professional, you know, get them to, to do the blood test or redo a urine test, something. All right, now false positives, I mean false negatives. How can false negatives happen? Also, because it might come up in the comments, uh, sometimes uh, you can get, uh, you can also get uh, false positives because people have um, unique medical situations. Also, certain medications can lead to a false positive. So it's not a particularly um, common situation to get a false, po false positive but it can happen. Much more common though is the false negative. And so ways that a false negative can happen. Testing too soon is a really big one. Um, people aren't always really familiar with their cycle. They're not really familiar with when they would have ovulated. Um, uh, you know, and I've mentioned in a previous video, there are issues with timing, the fact that sperm can persist in the body for three to six days after they're released. The ovum can persist for up to 24 hours. So there's not like, even if you, even if, it, even if sexual relations were only had one time, there's still this, this window of, you know, when conception might have actually happened. Um, and so, you know, it, it can lead to some confusion. And so people might think that they're testing at the right time, but really it's too early. Um, in general, a good recommendation that I've read many times, and I'm not a medical professional, I'm a professor, but you know, one thing that I'm often told or I've read, they say, wait until you've missed a period. Wait until you'd normally expect your period. Now, not everybody tracks things well enough to know when that, exactly that would be, but if you do know, wait until you're like a day late. That way you're less likely to waste money on a test, have a false negative, things like that. Um, and also, I remember I, one time I read an infertility blog where they basically said, um, it's not over until you need a pad. You know, the, the idea like just, that's the big sign. The big sign that a pregnancy has not happened is actually getting the menstrual period. Now, one confusing thing, what do I mean by the period? A period where you're actually bleeding because you are shedding, releasing that unused endometrial lining. You can have spotting or during early pregnancy. And so sometimes people, they see, a little bit of, they see a little bit of that and they're like, oh, that's my period. It may not actually be the period. It may be that someone's pregnant and then they're having spotting. Uh, you can have spotting from implantation. I mean, I never did, but I've heard that it is possible. Uh, and various like irritation of the cervix. There are various things that might lead to spotting during early pregnancy. Um, but uh, usually when you get it at 
the you know the 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 heaviness the 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 length of time that you would normally see uh, that you know that when you feel fairly confident yes this is a period that's a sign that's like your definite sign that a pregnancy has not happened when in doubt go to a medical professional all right but false positives can often happen from just testing too soon not really knowing um, when ovulation happened when the period would have been expected uh, I know the first few times I took a pregnancy test I tested too soon because I hadn't gotten to know my cycle yet uh, and I didn't realize that I had an atypical cycle and that you know the the normal dating techniques would not work for me and so then after a while I was like oh I got to test later if I want to get accurate results and I remember when I got that first, uh, first negative, at one time I got a negative, then found out I was pregnant, and one of my friends who did not want to be pregnant, uh, they were like, oh, that's not a good sign that you can get a negative and you're still pregnant. And I, I said, oh, I, did, I guess you don't know, but it's actually, that's really easy to do if you don't, if you don't get the timing right. Um, so if someone does not want to be pregnant, they take a pregnancy test and it comes out negative, they should not be celebrating or getting that sigh of relief just let just yet until the period begins or they go to a medical professional take a blood test and get that verification false negatives can also happen from doing other things like um, diluting the urine too much um, if you've ever seen the movie Juno there's a scene in the beginning where she she's already taken a test and it came out positive but she doesn't like the results she's taking another test and to be able to pee to be able to to pee on the stick she drinks like a whole bottle of sunny delight and you don't want to do that all right i mean hers came out positive but you do and um i'm saying her is because the character was a her the actor we now know is a trans man uh he played someone who used the pronoun her okay um so you know when the character of juno is t drinking all that sunny d that's not that's not, that's not what you want to do when you're taking a pregnancy test if you want accurate results. It's actually recommended that you get the best results from using first morning's urine because you haven't been drinking water all night. It's, it's more concentrated. Uh, it's less diluted. You don't want to drink a lot of water beforehand because it could dilute the urine. Then it doesn't pick up the HCG. Then you can get a false negative. All right, so false negatives are common. So please be careful. I mean, that's the most common thing that I get questions, question from, uh, from students. And then I'm always like, please go to your doctor, go to student health services, you, your friend, whoever you're asking about, uh, please go and check with them when you have doubts. Uh, these are not, not foolproof. Now, another tricky thing is we now have early results tests and they will promise that you can get a, a, an accurate result so many days before a missed period. I know there was one, it, 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 was, it was probably like 10 years ago, I don't know exactly when it was, but there was a very uh, widely shown commercial for a while where they're like, imagine knowing you're pregnant the moment it happens. We're not there yet, but you can know before. You can know earlier with this particular pregnancy test. And so a lot of students would say, well, no, this pregnancy test says that you can test super early. You can test as many as six days before a missed period. Well, if you actually read the box, read the labels on those early response tests, they do give you warnings. They say, hey, if you test six days before, you have this many, this many uh, percent chance, uh, and it's low. It's less than 50% uh, that, that you have this chance of getting an accurate result. And then the best results were if you actually wait for a missed period. Um, you know, so if you're really anxious, it's certainly understandable for someone to test early. But if it's a negative, that doesn't necessarily mean you're in the clear if, if you do not want to become pregnant. All right, so hopefully I cleared up some things about pregnancy testing. So, you know, next video, I'm not sure exactly what the next video is going to be about. I'm going to think about some of the common questions that I've gotten, but that's my one for today.